This is a demonstration of the recently completed instruction register. And I'll start with giving a quick overview of the card itself. Starting with the front of the card, we have the status LEDs. The red LEDs on the right display the 8-bit value currently held by the register, while the leftmost yellow LED shows when the register is being loaded. Moving up the card, we have the register bit relays. Each relay holds a single bit at a total 8-bit value. Moving further up the card again, we have the control and gating relays for the register as a block of 6 on the right. On the left are the immediate to bus gating relays, which take the lowest 5 bits of the instruction register value and gate it onto the data bus. This is used by the upcoming set AB instruction. At the top of the card are the connectors. Going from left to right, we first have the X control bus, which provides the instruction register load line and immediate to the bus line. Next to this is a 16-bit address bus, which is unused on this card. Next is the DI bus, which carries the 8-bit data and instruction buses. Finally, at the far right, is a power supply socket. Generally, the card is fairly similar in design to previous registers, except that the instruction register can only be loaded, not selected. This is because it's permanently connected to the instruction bus, which will then feed the upcoming decoder and controller cards. I'll now move on to giving the card a test. To do this, I've made a quick test rig up so that I can give the card a try independently of any other cards. Towards the back left is a flying lead which provides 12 volts. This will be used to tap either the register load or immediate to bus control line as needed. Leaving the card at the top is a ribbon cable which carries the data and instruction buses over to the breadboard on the left. The data bus is connected to the dip switches and the instruction bus to the LED bar graph display. Going back to the card, we can now follow the power cable out past the breadboard and eventually across my workbench over to my usual power supply. I'll start by setting an on-off, on-off pattern onto the dip switches and then loading that into the instruction register. I'll now switch it out for an on-off, on-off pattern and again load the instruction register. Finally, I'll set all bits on the data bus and load the instruction register one more time. If I now turn off all the dip switches and then load the register again, that will clear all the values. To test the immediate to bus functionality, I'll first of all put the on off on off pattern back into the register. With the register now holding this value on the instruction bus, I'll now swap the leads over so that the contents of the data bus are shown on the LEDs and not the contents of the instruction bus. As you can see, nothing shows on the data bus, but when I activate the instruction to bus circuitry, it shows the lowest five bits of the instruction. I'll now put the off on off on pattern into the register and then repeat the same process.
Again, the lower five bits of the instruction register are gated onto the data bus. But note that this time, because bit 4 is set on, bits 5, 6 and 7 are also set on. This is effectively using bit extending so that you could load a negative number from the set AB command onto the data bus. And that's pretty much it for the instruction register. The next card will be the decoder, which will take the value held in this register and decide what type of instruction it represents. As always, I'll be posting progress on my blog at relaycomputer.blogspot.co.uk, so please do take a look, and I'll no doubt put together a new video on here as soon as there's something more interesting to show.